All right. Well, everyone, welcome to the, the Falcon Store Store Safe product launch. Um, we started a couple minutes late here just to make sure that everyone had a chance to join. Uh, this is Todd Brooks. I'm the CEO of Falcon Store, and we're also joined today by David Morris, our VP of product. I'll take a few minutes at the start here and go over some background about Falcon Store and just about the general overview of Store Safe, and then I'll pass it over to David, who will go into more of the technical review, uh, which I'm sure most of you is what you guys really want to, you folks really want to see anyway. Uh, we also promised to give away a $250 gift card from Amazon uh, for those that registered. And so we'll have that drawing at the very end. And we'll also leave a few minutes at the end for questions. Um, with a webinar, it's, it's difficult um, many times for those questions to be um, verbal. So we ask that if you do have a question along the way, feel free to submit it in the question dialogue area of GoToWebinar. And at the end, we'll go through those and uh, answer as many as we can. All right, well, let's get started. So many of you uh, are probably familiar with Falcon Store. You might be a current user or a current partner or someone that has uh, used the, one of the company's solution in the past. And you know that Falcon Store has been around since uh, 2000, and we've been an early innovator and a frequent innovator in the data protection space. And we focus our attention pretty much exclusively on enterprise customers and helping them to better manage, protect, and secure their valuable data. Um, as I mentioned, we've been in you know business for quite a while, and we've developed a, a, a healthy patent portfolio. We've got uh, 38 patents right now and another eight that are pending, including uh, one for store safe. Um, we have a little over 800 customers now in 50 countries around the globe. And our products fall squarely into two major categories that we'll define a little further here in a few minutes. First, into long-term archive data retention and reinstatement. And then secondly, business continuity-driven data replication and recovery. You probably also know us as being one of the early innovators and in, uh, industry leaders in the virtual tape library technology, or VTL. Uh, we now have um, customers that manage over 1.5 exabytes of data through our VTL solution. So we'll talk a little bit about how we have evolved that solution over the last uh, several years. Um, and then we'll also talk along the way about how our products are natively um, hardware and software vendor agnostic. That's a very important tenet to our products that we'll highlight as we go. So diving into a little bit um, of our product suite before we go into the store safe product detail. So as I mentioned, you know, our uh, products fall into two categories. First being operationally related, the business continuity driven data replication and recovery products. Those are all based on snapshot or continuous journaling um, data capture. Um, and it's really targeted at improving your recovery point objectives or RPO and recovery time objectives or RTO. And then in the archive data space, um, our long-term archive retention and reinstatement products are all about helping you to dramatically reduce the cost of storage for your long-term backups and archives and all about helping you modernize your legacy backup and archived operations without requiring you to rip and replace your legacy solutions. So we'll talk about that here a little more in a minute. Within our business continuity, we have two products. Uh, first, our network storage server, or what we call NSS. That's all about in-band or production data, active-active mirroring, 
and replication using advanced storage virtualization, and then our continuous data protector product or CDP, which is all about sideband snapshot data replication. And um, here again, using storage virtualization to capture uh, data either on a time interval, you might choose you know, a five minute snapshot or based on a continual uh, journal-based snapshotting where every single read-write is, is captured. And then within our um, archive space, long-term archive, I've already mentioned our, our virtual tape library. Um, if you've been a user of that, then you know it's we've got industry-leading data deduplication. We have industry-leading um, performance in that area. And um, I'll, I'll talk a little bit too as I mentioned earlier about how we've repositioned the, the solution a little bit over the last couple of years and the, and the results of that. And then um, the topic of this storage, of, of this uh, webinar is all about store safe. So you wanna think about store safe as being our next generation virtual tape library or VTL. So it includes everything that our proven stable um, VTL solution includes, but then it goes to a completely different level on how you're able to store your archive data and dramatically reduce your cost. And we've we've um, innovated in this area. We have introduced um, storage that is can be handled through industry standard containers. I'll let David get into the details of that here in a minute. Um, but we're really excited about StoreSafe, the value that it's going to deliver, the cost it's going to help re reduce for your long-term archive storage cost, and just the ability to begin to utilize whichever storage environment, be it on-prem, be it cloud, be it some hybrid of the two, that you um, want, to, want to utilize to manage and, and control your archive cost. So I mentioned we had repositioned our, well, before I get to that point, let me let me just kind of make a, a statement here with this slide. Um, I think everybody knows it's, it's a common fact that, that, you know, tapes have been around a long time. And, and according to a recent ESG survey, 63% of the enterprises today um, plan to continue to use tape, at least uh, to some degree. It may be simply for data that's been previously archived. Maybe it's not actively used anymore in an active archive and backup operation, but you still maintain volumes and volumes of tape. So that could be the, the case, or you, you might continue to use tape. But, you know, there's 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 issues with tape, right? There, the the inaccessibility of the data or the difficulty getting at the data, the fact that you have to recycle your tapes periodically every few years, um, you know, just creates a situation where it's just not an optimal long-term archive solution. It has been optimal from a cost perspective, but it certainly has not been optimal from a usability perspective historically. And we believe with the introduction of our store safe that we're gonna be able to actually show that that we can give you a solution that will beat tape as it relates to not only accessibility, but also cost, right? And we'll talk about that a little more here in a few minutes. Um, I mentioned that we've repositioned our VTL a little bit in the marketplace. And as a result of that, in 2019, which we just finished up, um, our VTL sales increased by 40% year over year. So 40% compared to 2018. And that's completely on the back of, you know, demonstrating that our solution is the best performance in the, the marketplace. It's on the back of doing things like um, um, replacing IBM Protect tier or uh, Hitachi Sepaton or other other solutions that have been end of life. So um, our VTL is not only doing well, but it is growing significantly. And we think, we believe that it is a fantastic foundation 
on which to build store safe and on which to build the next generation of cutting um, long-term archive storage costs for our users. So as store safe related, as I mentioned, you know, it's all about leveraging industry standard containers to um, better store data, create, create um, more portable data, and to allow you to optimize where and how you store that data. And I won't, I won't uh, get into the details of that. I'll let David do that. I won't steal his thunder. Um, but that's what store safe from a high level is all about. Now, before I turn it over to David, let, let's talk just a little bit about the archive mar market in general. So, you know, when you when, when you look at the challenges that you likely face with inside of your enterprise when it, when it comes to dealing with uh, long term archives or backups, you know, there are there are a few common pain points that we see when customers come to us. You know, one is commonly your data is grown. The, 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 the amount of data that you're processing and backing up and archiving on a routine basis has grown so much that you're having a hard time um, getting it archived or backed up within your defined backup window. So that's one. Another, uh, and then the recent ESG study, they actually um, reported that this was number one concern amongst enterprises, and that is the high cost of storing um, data and then retrieving that data when you need it. Uh, third then is just all around scalability. You know, at your large enterprise and you're and you're growing through you're growing organically or you're growing through MA and the amount of data that you're processing and backing up and archiving is just exploding. So how do you scale properly, right? And then last but not least, data migration. And this has become more and more of an important topic as data um, around the enterprise, you know, folks want to leverage that data, analyze that data to learn, to develop new products, uh, whatever the case may be. So another factor that's, I am sure, top of mind with many of you is the increasing burden that various regulations, various laws, privacy laws are having across enterprises you know that live in many verticals you know whether you're in healthcare financial services whatever it might be there's just a plethora of of um regulations and laws that have been uh rolled out over the last few years that are just making the job all the harder for backing up and archiving data and the the length of time that you actually have to retain that data if we go back in time, um, you typically dealt with, the, if you looked at your data, all the data that you managed, um, the, the, the larger percent lived in the, the production or the active category. And a smaller percent, although you had a lot, a smaller percent was in the uh, archive or cold data area. When we fast forward today, that is completely Flipped. So today, oh yeah, there's still a lot of production data. There's still a lot of coal or, or warm operational data that you capture. But the amount of data that lives in your organization now for multiple years that you're retaining, and in some cases we've seen retention periods eclipse 100 years that folks are having to now retain data. This right side of the chart is really becoming an issue and one that, that we have squarely targeted our store safe um, product. And then finally, before I turn it over to David, you know, not only has the amount of data exploded, but over on the right-hand side here, those within your organization that care about this data now extend far beyond those that are worried about disaster recoveries, those that are worried about legal discovery, um, they extend well into the enterprise and well into various roles across the enterprise that could really take advantage of the data. And if it weren't locked, you know, into it, locked in an archive and 
and um, difficult to retrieve. And so with that, I'm gonna pause here and I am gonna turn it over to David so that he can go into some of the technical details about StoreSafe. David? Thank you, Todd. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you, where you are in the world or uh, when you're listening to this recording. Uh, my name is David Morris. I'm the uh, Vice President of Product for Falcon Store. As a little background, I've actually been a customer, a partner, a competitor, and now an employee of Falcon Store uh, over my 20 plus year career in storage. Uh, and I've always looked at uh, Falcon Store as a leader uh, in, a, in a number of different areas. Um, you know, ironically, when I started to build a competing product to Falcon Store, um, I had a conflict, right? We wanted to build a competing product with deduplication, but where we made our money was selling storage volume, disk drives. So trying to balance that out, I wanted my dedupe to be good, but not super good. When we look at the history of Falcon Store, they've actually taken the opposite ideology, right? And as a software company today, we're looking at developing and optimizing these algorithms to the maximum capability possible. And what does this do? This saves as much money as possible over a long period of time of these archives because of the lower data footprint uh, than ever before. And we took that same ideology when we started looking at store safe and as Todd alluded to, seeing this explosion in data because of compliance, regulatory, e-discovery, GDRP, and other mandates that are driving this retention period. And this is fundamentally changing the archive. Our new product, StoreSafe, takes a different approach. It's a data-centric approach versus a system-level traditional approach. And this really is re redefining the archive and retention and reinstatement which is a much different than your, your regular backup and recovery. It goes much deeper for the next decade and beyond. And so how did we do this? And why did we do this? So as we were looking and asking ourselves the question, what was gonna happen going forward? And we see this tsunami of data that's occurring that has to be retained for 10, 25, 50, 100 years, we thought, how in the world do you maintain access to data over a 100 year period? Take the extreme, right? If we look traditionally from a storage system standpoint, that could be seven to, to 10 different storage lifetimes where you have to migrate that data between these uh, systems over time. Um, and it's very challenging to do that. And we see that with some of the content available storage that was, that was introduced in 2003 now is being in the life. And it's a very expensive proposition to move that data to a new storage system. And especially once you get retention locks and other feature functionality involved, e-discovery where you can't change the metadata, it becomes very complex to move data from a storage system. And historically, that's the problem. Data has been linked directly into a storage system. And we thought about that for quite some time. We said, we need to solve that problem because when we looked at it, the endpoints are expanding. And what we've developed is store safe. It's a new product, it's a different approach, it's that data-centric approach. We've developed a persistent virtual storage container, we call VSC for short, which is predicated on the Linux containers, right? Kind of like Docker containers, right? Now that's an active runtime environment that's traditionally temporary or transient, right? For application running from a compute standpoint, Right, We looked at that and said, if we virtualize and leverage the virtualization of the container at the application level, what that does 
is free us up from the below systems, right? We disaggregate the data from the traditional storage systems. That gives us an insane amount of portability, right? So anytime we need to interoperate, we can move in this container between any storage system or any S3 compatible cloud. That's pretty big. Now, when we first brought this up, we were looking at it and our, our lead engineer, you know, who's been in the company working with this uh, for 20 years, looks at us and goes, those containers, that's a runtime environment, that's temporary. We're like, yeah, but you know, maybe we, if we can make it persistent and we, we could actually store data in this container, then we would get all this portability. We would, you know, build on the open source trend, which we think will extend well into the future, which will future proof our technology and leverage and give you access from you know, that 10, 25, 50, and 100 years standpoint through that integration and allow you to, to um, easily migrate this data as systems, storage systems, and clouds either come and go. So he came back in a week. He was like, I don't know. He comes back in a week and Frank's a great guy. He goes, wow. Because I've worked with, you know, the constraints of the tape format, LTO, for the last 20 years. He goes, you know, it's been so frustrating. I have to, you know, work around these restrictions from a capacity standpoint, um, a file standpoint. He goes, this container thing, I think we figured out how to make it persistent. And it's like LT on steroids and then some. He got really excited. And then we got really excited. So we started looking at that. What we actually get is not only the portability, we actually get a big bonus that we can vary the payload. So we can make big containers so with it we can stick as much data in there as possible and dedupe across it to gain huge efficiencies. Or if you need data that to pull it back very quickly, we can make very small containers and dedupe across those. You sacrifice the efficiency of the dedupe for the um, the accelerated return and reinstatement of that system. Now, the cool thing, the very cool thing, since it's a runtime environment within this container architecture, we can execute little bits of code inside these containers. And that gives us some interesting advanced features that we'll talk about coming up. We take a different approach to encryption around this, but we give you our best compression and the best in class deduplication that you can get in the market today. This actually delivers a vendor agnostic archive container that's centered on the data, not the storage system, but the data. It's future proofed, and then we can actually go across multiple clouds. And then when we talk about encryption, we've instituted a no trust model. So we give you the keys, the customer controls the keys the encryption keys to every container. We don't have those. So we can't be subpoenaed to access your data. You, It's your data, you own your data, you should have access to your data and uh, maintain who can and can't have access to your data. So in our first version, StoreSafe, which is the new product, that's got this new approach, this data-centric approach, can take all our virtual libraries, we move it into our single instant repository, right? It doesn't lot rely on the, the boundary conditions and the, the restrictions of traditional tape formats. We export it with an index, deduplicate that data and assemble it into a new format inside the container. And we call this the portable storage format, PSF. We compress that, encryption is applied and we put a little piece of code in there that does a checksum within the, against the data that's in the container. And this is very important. We'll talk about this more in a minute. Now, this container is fully compliant. We can send it to pretty much any storage system or any cloud that you need. And this allows you to look across the number of clouds, depending if you need performance or you need to maximize cost efficiency or you need to balance those, which cloud to send it to and the best cloud to do that. This gives you a lot of flexibility, or if you need to migrate it from one cloud to another or pull it back to your data center, you can do all of those seamlessly 
and you don't have to change anything within the data. The data is contained within the container. So this very, very dynamic, very portable. In our second phase, which will be the latter half of this year, we do the same thing, but we actually apply erasure coding to the main container. This breaks it up into six mini containers, and each mini container can be stored on a different endpoint. So maybe one's on AWS, one's on Azure, one's on H, you know, Hitachi HCP. You know, one of our best partners with no egress fees is Wasabi. You can store it on a local hard drive, one of if you have multiple data centers, right? And this gives you a RAID capability across multiple endpoints, right? We call it the redundant array of independent clouds. It gets really exciting. What this does is if you had two copies for redundancy, say one on AWS and one on Wasabi, you'd have to have double the data. With erasure coding, we can reduce that by 50 to 75% and increase your reliability by an order of magnitude. It's really exciting. Now, with the, with the deduplication, the compression, the encryption, and the further obfuscation that the erasure coding provides as well as the distribution across multiple clouds, this capability actually meets data sovereignty criteria for GDPR. Very fun. Now, when we look at this, what do I have to do? So this is a seamless recovery and redundancy. Erasure coding, we can actually lose two containers, two full mini containers and still rebuild a complete data set from the four remaining. In that standpoint, we have a couple different scenarios we could look at. Say that you've got a data center in, in Iowa, and for whatever reason, they backhoe hits your fiber and that data center goes dark. You lose all access to that mini container. And say there's a nation state challenge and your cloud provider goes down because of bad actors. Well, if you have your four other access to four other containers, we can actually pull those back and rebuild the two other containers to provide extra resiliency and still have 100% data access, right? Another scenario would be if you need to say, have a uh, e-discovery subpoena where you need to recover your data and bring it back, you know, there's gonna be a significant cost to e-discovery and then that whole process in and of itself. So you wanna pay the least data egress fees as possible. So you can look across all six of your mini containers and see what the four least costly egress fees are and pull back in parallel to accelerate the, the rebuild from those four and then delete the other two. So it gives you a lot of flexibility. One from a resiliency standpoint, it reduces your overhead from a data redundancy standpoint and gives you a lot of flexibility when dealing with cloud vendors and distributing your data across data centers and uh, clouds. Now we talked about, you know, a Linux container being a run state environment, an executable environment. Now, when you take your data, you're typically now not only having it in your data center, but you're putting it out on the public cloud. And as we've seen on all the news, the number of threat vectors are increasing, the number of bad actors are increasing, and this data at rest, sitting there on a public cloud, is the low hanging fruit of, of four bad actors, right? So we need to keep track. It's not good enough just to stick your data up in the cloud and trust that it's gonna be okay. What we need to do is provide a consistent periodical check of each of your data containers, whether it's a single large data container or an erasure coded mini container, um, that that container maintains its data integrity and validation over the retention life cycle. And so we can actually execute code that checks the validity and integrity of that mini container uh, at periodical intervals and sends that data home to a secure journal so that we can create a legal chain of custody with validation logs of every container that's out on the web, out in the public cloud and in, the, in your data centers. Now, interesting enough, if something happens and it comes back that if a bad actor, say, 
uh, does a denial of service so you can't get to one container or there's a hardware corruption or a software issue or it goes down and you need to maintain that we actually look and, and see that that uh, is is not uh, has become corrupt and we issue a command to the other containers to do a rebuild uh, and execute that and give give us uh, it back to the log so that we have a full robust six container suite from a resiliency standpoint with the chain of custody log and the rebuild uh, in, in the log. So you have a it's really interesting um, capability now that you're moving this data to the cloud. You can't just put it there and forget it. You need to put it there and then check on it at a regular interval, right? And whether you're going through a compliance audit, a regulatory review, or a you know, e-discovery subpoena, you can actually take our secure data integrity logs into uh, the courtroom to get those checked off on that you have maintained chain of custody across this corpus uh, for its life cycle, whether it's 10 years, 20 years, 15 years, 100 years. Um, very interesting. And this is just the start. There's some actually really cool um, futures that we can do with the executable code, uh, and, and those will come out later, but it gets really exciting what we can do with the data and applications within these, uh, within these containers. So when we look at StoreSafe, it's our new product. It's a different approach. It's a data-centric approach versus a system-level approach, and this changes the game quite a bit, right? What we can do is we leverage our best-in-class ingest engine to meet any backup window that you need. We've delivered a no trust security model so that you control the security of your data at all times. With the capacity of the archive, we have this variable payload capacity where we can actually expand out leveraging our dedupe to reduce the size of any data set to its minimal footprint, right? And that's not only for today, that's over time. So if we think about that, say it's $10,000 for a competitor to store data for a year. You know, if you store it for 10 years, that's $100,000. If you store it for 100 years, that's a million dollars. If you could cut that data in half, you would cut your cost in half. So instead of 10,000, now you're at 5,000. Instead of 100,000, now you're at 50. And at 100 years, instead of that million dollars, your only investment is $500,000. So that footprint over time is very critical to reduce the cost burden uh, of that, that keeping that data. Now, because we're using these industry standard containers and can put these containers on any S3 cloud, right, any endpoint, you basically get unlimited scalability, right? As the cloud scales, you need more, you move more containers up, the cloud expands. So you're not limited fundamentally to the disk drives in your data center any longer for your backup and archives. You can keep more, right? And we talked about a couple of different ways we can accelerate this reinstatement, right? One, we check the information that it's valid. What we stored a decade ago is the same as it is today, but we can actually make small containers to pull back very quickly, or we can actually erase your codem and pull them back in parallel to accelerate that reinstatement. And oftentimes when you're under certain uh, legal restrictions, you do have a timeline and it's very critical to meet that, or there's quite a bit of um, uh, fines and fees associated with that in even jail time. The validity of the archive and checking that over time, that one on the public web, I think is gonna be absolutely critical in the future and will become a standard feature that you must have uh, throughout the public cloud. And then we talk about, you know, the optimizing the data egress fees, which today is a big deal. It's not bad enough that you have to pay for a compliance audit. That, that's expensive enough or a, re, you know, a regulatory review or e-discovery case. All those are very, very expensive. You have the, the further burden of having to pay to get your data back to prove your innocence in those cases. And we help you minimize that cost as much as possible. Now, when we were thinking of store safe and we came up with the container idea, one of the beautiful things 
is the integration capability is built in to the open source community, which we participate quite a bit in. And this allows us to take this storage container and pretty much go to any endpoint on the right that you would like. So a common disk drive, if you if you need it, we could go to USB if you wanted. You can go to common you know, solid state disk. You can go to a private cloud, public cloud environments, AWS, Hitachi HCP. One of our great partners with no egress fees, Wasabi. You could go to Microsoft Azure or IBM, right? Any endpoint where you needed to optimize either for performance, for cost, or for both, you can now pick where you want each container to go to optimize its, its uh, requirements. On the left side, as Todd mentioned, you know, we are very agnostic throughout the ideology of Falcon Store and basically drop in seamlessly and can take data from the traditionally legacy backup solutions, ArcServe, Commvault, EMC Dell, HP, IBM, Oracle, Veeam, Veritas, Microsoft, move that data in and then store it on any endpoint. One of the things that we found recently because of the uh, pandemic is we have the capability to move data from legacy physical tape into store safe into an endpoint. And we found that there are a lot of companies out there uh, that want to do this to get away from physical tape so they, they don't put their employees at risk having to go into a data center, physically handle tapes and move them. So that one's actually one that very few companies still do today, but is one of the fundamental uh, technologies that we have baked into both our VTL product as well as store safe. And that's a big deal. Now, if we look at that, Hold on, sorry. When we think about these containers, you know, maybe you're backing up five times a week, right? Or five times. And then, you know, you look at uh, a month. So you're starting to, these backups are starting to accrue. And so say you got 30 a month, that's times, you know, 12, you got 320 backups, right? You go plus or minus. And then you start looking over a 10, 20, 30 year period. These containers, especially if you split them up times six, if you're doing erasure coding, you can get into the thousands and 10,000s of containers very, very quickly. And the question is, how do I keep track of them all? What we have and what we've modified is our FMS management console that manages our NSS and CD products. We've moved that and extended it to be our unified management and analytics control that we can now call StoreSite. We can manage NSS, CDP, VTL, and StoreSafe. And the thing that I think about, and I get excited about this one, is if you roll back in time to the network, when we were, when I was actually installing an ISP and building out an ISP, we had all kinds of trouble knowing if our switches and routers were up or down, if they were operating correctly, you had no tools to view what was going on in your network. We had to write all these scripts and it was really painful to, to get that to all work correctly. And these tools came, one was OpenView and the other one was Tivoli, right? And they provide these beautiful views into, visual views into your network. And you can see individual routers. You can see the connections between the routers and the switches. And it pulled them at regular intervals to know that they're good, just like our integrity checks. And you, if it, something went wrong, it, it sent an alert, right? And it did analytics on the whole network to see the performance of the network. This, as we move into tens of thousands of containers over a hundred years in, in the, in the cloud, we need a way to track those and we need to know which ones are active and good and, and, and uh, have their integrity and which one has become corrupted and have that overall view of, of the data network that's gonna emerge as we move more and more data into the cloud. And this actually, I see in that, you know, open view and Tivoli type view abstracted to data is what StoreSight will mature into to give you the, the insight to where your data is at, how your data is doing, and what are the integrity validation that it, that it has today. When we look at it, 
you know, StoreSafe is our new product. It's a different approach. It's a data-centric approach versus a system approach. And it really is redefining the long-term archive from a retention and reinstatement for the next decade and beyond. We give you the capability from a deduplication and this new erasure coding to give you the to reduce your storage volumes to the lowest footprint possible to give you the lowest cost not only at the at the day one but over the lifetime the retention life cycle of your data we give you the ability because of we're, we're using standard linux containers the interoperability to move your data where you want to whenever you want to and we increase its data accessibility the survivability and the redundancy to over 11 nines and again, the consistent data integrity and provable chain of custody over time, that is a golden thing. So you can prove the data that you save today is the same as tomorrow, is the same as the next day and so on. The data egress fee optimization is bonus points. You get that right out of the box and can optimize that right today. And then with StoreSight, you get a powerful unified management and analytics console to give you real-time visibility into your data, its location, and its integrity. So Todd, would you like to uh, take over now? No, I'll be happy to. So, you know, as we mentioned earlier, folks, uh, first of all, Dave, thanks for taking us all through that. Appreciate that. If you have any questions, you know, certainly do feel free to um, submit those in the question dialog box um, within GoToWebinar, uh, or uh, you can see the email on the screen here, storesafeinfo at falconstore.com, um, and you can certainly, if you want to send a, submit a question or, or ask a question later, you can send one to there. Uh, one question that's come up, David, is, um, you know, when do you expect uh, folks will be able to begin um installing and playing with the store the new store safe product so we uh we should have that ready and um available uh by the end of the month great um also another question is um so 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 store safe is uh you know essentially the next generation of vtl and Falcon Store has got a lot of VTL customers. Will it be something that you can migrate into directly from VTL into StoreSafe? We're working on that to actually make that happen. We want to take those VTL customers because it's very aligned, very parallel, right? To give them the extra capability and the, the cost efficiency that we have in StoreSafe. Great. No, that, makes, that makes complete sense. Okay, any other, we'll, we'll give another, I'll tell you what, what, let's do this. Let's, while we're waiting to see if anybody else has a question or two, why don't we um, do the Amazon gift card drawing? All right, so I have all the uh, names here in the hat. We had, I think, uh, a little over north of uh, 100 uh, registrants that uh, joined us today and we appreciate that. Thank you very much for coming. And I'm gonna go through the hat here and pull out a name. Give me a second. All right, I have one. It looks like uh, Mark Langer of PricewaterhouseCoopers. You're the winner today of the $250 gift card Amazon giveaway. Congratulations, Mark Langer. All right, great. So how, how will Mark um, how will we get in touch with Mark? I guess we've got Mark. I guess we got your email, and we can. David, will you just uh, uh, send that that info out. over to Mark? Is that the way it's going to work? I'll reach out to Mark uh, as soon as we finish the webinar. All right, fantastic. All right, well, folks, once again, thank you for spending your time with us today. We're, we're if you can't tell, we're really excited about this. You know, we're really excited just about this whole long-term archive market in in in, in general. You know, we've been a, a player for a very long time in this market. Um, we know what we're doing. We know how to protect data. We know how to, to massively reduce the size of that data using our data du duplication. And we're excited about the extension then that StoreSafe is going to be able to give us. So, you know, if you have any questions, like I mentioned, please send an email to storesafeinfo at falconstore.com. 
and you know one of our folks will get back with you ASAP. But thanks again, and we look forward to the next webinar. Thank you.